Welcome to this 8 News Now special Pathway to Discovery. I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Paul Johnson. Thanks for joining us. You can let your imagination just run wild as we take you inside the all-new Discovery Children's Museum. It is truly a work of art. Nine exhibits highlighting all the things that make Southern Nevada great. And not only is it fun for kids, but it's fun for people like myself who are, you know, young at heart. I know. Well, there's some really cool things inside to explore. There's a, a water world that has an interactive replica of the Hoover Dam. How about Fantasy Festival? Where for all the world's a stage for kids to become whomever they want to be. And tonight, we're going to show it all to you. And Mr. Young at Heart here, you did some climbing inside, right? Yes, I did. It's a brand new feature. It's called uh, the Summit, and it really catches your eye as soon as you walk in the door. Let's take a look. So this is the Summit, 12 levels of fun and learning. Think of a McDonald's Playland times 100 with all kinds of educational aspects. This is Tiffany White. She's a deputy director of the museum. Tell me about this. This is a 70 foot tall structure. It goes up the three levels of the museum and punches out the roof. All kinds of different exhibits on the 12 different levels. The first level, we have a beautiful yellow car here. And what are we going to learn from this? Well, we're going to learn that this lifting this car is by doing it by using a lever. Okay. So we have two ways in which we can use this lever. This one or this one? You want this Let's one, Paul? This one. Let's try it together. To lift. Yeah, I'll help you with this one. Here we go. Uh, we, got it up. we got it up a little we bit. We got oh, it up. Good. Yay. Right. Good job, yeah. Paul. All right. Good. Now let's try so this. So let's try this one. Now I'm guessing this let's fulcrum see. here yeah. is spelled out. This fulcrum is going to help us here. So right. let's see. Let's, let's see. Try. Okay. Let's Pull. try it. Lift up that car. Lift All it up. Right. Oh, that's much easier. Well, I think that was a little bit easier. That's a good lesson. So our lesson here is that we can lift the car easier if we're further away from the fulcrum or the pivot point. Kids are going to love it and they're going to remember it. Love it. They're going to remember it. Lifting the car? That's cool. 12 levels. Let's climb those stairs and see what else is up Absolutely. there, shall we? Absolutely. Come on. All right. 12 levels of fun and we are uh, entering the second level right now. Yes, this is level B. What do we have here? We have more simple machines. We have wheel and axle, incline planes, and gears. gears. Why don't we come over here and explore a little bit? This looks like fun. Are you ready for a challenge? Yeah, hit me. Okay, um, we have a gear system here. Why don't you add a medium gear and a small gear okay. and try to make our train work? All right, let me add a medium gear up here, mm -hmm. a small gear down here. Okay. Turn it. Oh, look at, that. look at that! Great job, come on! Yeah, great, everything. Oh, look at you taking the challenge a little bit further. <laughs> I like it. Right, great. Gears, fun with gears. Now these are inclined planes. Think about a ramp that you use to lift things from the bottom of the ramp to the top, but here you're lifting yourself. So you're sitting in a chair and you're actually pulling yourself up. Let's give it a try. Yeah, good job. Let's give good it a job. Try. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to be sore after today. I think so. Okay, let's use those muscles. Wow. Come on. That's Good harder than job. it looks. Good job, Paul. That's harder than Great it looks. Job. That's going to be fun. So for that kids. was, now you were able to lift yourself up pretty quickly. Now, wow. I'm glad you chose this one because if you chose the other one, it would have taken you a whole lot longer. But you used those muscles and got there faster. One of the good Great challenge. Job. Good. So, 10 more levels on this structure on the summit. Uh, before I shimmy up that tube right there, though, Denise, we're going to send it back to you. Thanks, Paul. We're right in the middle of the Young at Art Room. This place is so cool and so colorful. You're going to love it. In here, kids can, they can paint, draw, build. They can do puzzles. Really a lot of fun. In fact, right down the hall is a place called Water World, and that's where our Petronia Pool Swan got to check out both places. I like to draw manga, just someone from my imagination. <laughs> For 11-year-old Barbie Hi. Owen, art makes her happy. Like, if something inspires me, I just go for it. And here at the Young at Art exhibit, kids like Barbie can find plenty of inspirations to create. I love art. To draw and to just have fun. What do you think about this museum? I think it's awesome. Well, number one, it's huge. And number two, it's like they've got everything. Young at Art brings color, lines, shapes, and texture to life through a number of hands-on activities from water coloring stations to smart boards geared just for kids. How does it work? Oh, like you have to press on it. Right. And if you want small uh -huh. and big, then I draw a smiley face. What are we making? 
Anything in particular? And smiles are what museum presenters like Adam Koslowski want to see on all these children's faces every day they come to work. It's one of those things where they're having a good time and they're enjoying doing what they're doing and then you throw a little knowledge at them and they don't even realize it's happening. And here making a mess is all part of the fun. I'm sure a lot of parents out there would rather have the kids go crazy here with all the pain, all the colors, all the water, rather than do it in their own living room. The world of imagination keeps flowing right into Waterworld, another exhibit where children can learn and have lots of fun all at the same time. And when you're in here, prepare to get wet. I got my poncho on ready, and these kids are going to show me why this place is so fun. Ooh, there's a splash. One of the first things you see when you walk inside is a huge water shooter, where kids get to test how far they can send these balls flying onto an overhead track with the help of water pressure. You have to get everything out. They can come here, they can get as wet as they want. I definitely think you should bring a change of clothes. Great advice because even with their blue and yellow aprons, adventurous children will most likely get drenched at water world. Can I shoot that one? Don't shoot me, don't shoot me. But that's all part of the fun and the learning experience. And what better way to learn than with some really cool visual experiments? Like looking through the eye of a water hurricane to feeling the flow of water pushing down a makeshift dam. Our famous Hoover Dam actually plays a big role in this exhibit, teaching children about water science and how it can help generate electricity. And you can actually see the designs of the dam in the future. And from the looks on these kids' faces, it's pretty clear they also hope to keep coming back for years to come. Petronia Poonswan, 8 News Now. That looks like a blast, Petrania. I want to show you something really neat. Look at this giant carrot, big milk carton, and a banana. By these things alone, you can tell we've moved to It's Your Choice. This is an area where kids make healthy choices about what they're eating. We're joined right now by Linda Quinn, who's the CEO of the Children's Discovery Museum. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Showing us around. So healthy choices. You've got some examples here of what kids, the size of things they should be putting on their plate, right? Yes. This gives them an idea, a quick idea of what the portion size would be, what a serving size would be. So, for example, if they fill an entire plate full of spaghetti or pasta, what we're telling them is that a computer mouse is, a, is the size that they should have. And same thing with a piece of protein or a piece of fruit. It's got to be much smaller on the plate. Exactly. Once they figured out the portions, now they can actually start reading the labels. And this yeah. is neat. This is find a label. And where does the reading come in on this? So the reading here is they're able to turn this into a game. Mm -hmm. They spin a wheel. Yep. And then they go to the grocery section here, and then they're able to match up based on their clue with the wheel. Right. They start looking for products, and they look at the label on any given um, product, and they're looking at the ingredients. So we're really teaching them about the ingredients, about calories. But Linda, this exhibit is, is more than just about nutrition, isn't it? Yes, it is. We wanted to make sure that children understood that there is more than nutrition, there is also exercise and health of their overall body. So we have other exhibits such as the sun protection factor that teaches them about sun safety, mm -hmm. and then exercise type exhibits that teaches them to keep their heart healthy. Great stuff. Thanks so much, Linda. In fact, uh, I understand that Paul's out getting his heart rate up right now. You know, this takes some effort, but I know if it's a payoff because I I'm going to learn something at the next level. Absolutely, Paul. Come on up. I can't wait for you to get here so we can make music together. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to see it. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're taking you through the levels of the summit. We're at level C, which is where we feel the music. This is all about sound and how our ears hear sound. Yes, absolutely. So why don't we play a little bit of sound here and see what's on this level? All right, we got a huge electric guitar kind of thing. So we're playing some Jim Morrison there for a second. Yes, That's good. yes, we have better all, at this than All me. kinds of other stuff. And this sound is all about vibration. That's how our ears process this, right? Yes. So sound is vibration. So something has to vibrate in order for us to have sound. So let's see if we can make these xylophones vibrate. Xylophone. Beautiful. More vibration. More and vibration. Even more vibration. We have these. 
Yes, you have the maracas and I have the triangles. Triangles are open so that that vibration can happen. And on the other side of the level, we have a huge ear, which demonstrates to us how our ears hear sound and how our ears connect with our brains. Yes, we need to understand that anatomy of the ear in order to really understand how we hear and how it connects to our brain. So that big ear model helps us to be able to do that. And then just a few steps away, another level that's all about air pressure. All about air pressure. This is our scarf shooter. So let's see if you can use air pressure to move our scarves through the tubes. What the two, the purple and the purple. Purple and the orange. Oh, whoa, whoa, it looks like you're pretty good at that, Paul. <laughs> that is great. I love that. The kids are going to love that. Absolutely. Well, what's this over here? This is our Bernoulli blower, and it's named after a scientist that coined air pressure, using air pressure to move things. The object here is to get this ball up through the hoop. Move that ball up through the hoop. Ready Are you good at basketball? Absolutely. Well, a little. Kind okay. of. Well, let's see if we can get that ball up through the hoop there using air pressure. Get it! Basket! Oh, Yay! Right. <laughs> All right. And there's so much more to show you. But right now, let's send it back to Denise. I am loving steering this gigantic pirate ship in the middle of the Discovery Children's Museum. Lots of great things to touch and feel here. Christina Rod is going to show us more of the Fantasy Festival and one place where kids who are just learning how to crawl or walk the plank. Throw it to her. Good job. Good job. Little Haley is a toddler in Toddler Town, an interactive exhibit for little learners. Rick Mueller's mom, Ashley, likes it so much she says they'll be back twice a month. There are endless opportunities here for them to develop lifelong skills through play. It's extremely important from birth on for them to be exposed to all sorts of different sights, sounds, textures, feelings, for them to develop all sorts of skills. Early childhood education coordinator Laura Christian says everything here is meant to engage the senses. Oh, there you go. She's feeling it. In the toddler area, you'll find soft floor and plenty of textures for toddlers to feel and learn about. I like having the, the area to, to put her where there's kind of no boundaries for her there and she can just explore however she feels like. You want to race? Okay, ready to go. Toddler Town is for toddlers up to five years old. But there's more than just science here. If you want to be a cowgirl or a cowboy, maybe a knight in shining armor or even a doctor, looks like a stethoscope right here, this is the place to come. They're not just focusing on science here, they're also focusing on kids' more creative side. Right, ready? Go! <laughs> Woo! Caleb Bowen is captaining his own ship. It's equipped with everything a pirate needs. So this is a great getaway for him. Marlene C. is in charge of Fantasy Festival, where pretending to be someone else is the adventure. Where they're using um, their imagination to really make uh, these different scenarios come alive, like for instance the pirate ship or the castle or creating a play. At the same time, the kids are learning by collaborating and problem solving. Plus, parents can participate too. Whenever they smile, you know that you're doing the right thing. Emma! This is Ethany Kelvert. And you are a princess. Her imagination is bursting. This is the top of the castle. And she gives us a tour of her kingdom. Those queens and kings. And a quick peek at just how boundless. This is a royal treasure box. And beautiful a child's mind can be. Christina Rada, 8 News Now. Thanks, Christina. Oh, hi, Denise. Hey, I got some goodies for us. Great. We're ringing up some real life lessons. In fact, I coming up after the break, we're going to show you how this miniature city is teaching kids how to be green. Hey, don't forget the ice cream. Right away, Miss Valdez. <laughs> Opening night at the Children's Museum was quite a show. Governor Brian Sandoval and Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman were on hand to cut the ribbon. And they say the new facility is putting Southern Nevada on the map with some of the best children's museums in the country. Now we have uh, bounced over to the patents pending area where you can make your own invention no matter how wacky you might think it is. In fact, we put together this little car and then you can test it on the track. Boom! Not so bad. Speaking of not so bad, let's find out how Paul's doing. I hear he's just about at the top of that summit. This level is all about light. 
Light and, and color. This reminds me of the giant light bright kit we used to play with as kids. Yes, it's just a giant light bright. So if we look back here, we have white light that's in the back and we have these color tubes. And when we put those color tubes in, we can see that the color then emits through the tubes. And that allows us to be able to use it to make art. I've had a great time climbing and learning on the summit. And there are so many things that we haven't been able to show you. So hopefully one day soon, you can come and experience the summit for yourself. Denise, it was a little bit of an effort to get up here. It was worth it and it was fun. One of the great things is there are slides to make going down easier. So Denise, see you soon. Paul, you're not the only one that is rising to new heights here at the museum. I'm still at Patents Pending, where we're exploring the drop zone. So keep an eye on that yellow parachute, lift off, and a pretty soft landing, not bad. There are lots of cool things that you can learn here, but there's also some real life skills too. And Cherie Harvin checked them out in Eco City. <laughs> it's another day in the workforce. Cars need fixing. Groceries need bagging. And pets need tending. We had to inject her with some uh, medicine to keep her down while we performed surgery on her. This is the real world, but it's not like any place I've ever lived. Employees make good, honest pay. So tell me, how much do you pay your workers here at Jamba Juice? $20. $30,000 an uh, hour. $30,000 an hour? Yes. Now that is a good job. Can I come work for you then? Maybe, yes. But it's not about living the good life, but a green life. Awesome. Welcome to Eco City, Nevada, near the I-15 and 95. I'm thinking this is one of the better ways to live. Houses here are made from renewable or recycled material. Grocery stores think paper, not plastic. And clean energy is created from wind turbines. Everything is environmentally friendly. Here's what I love most about Eco City. Here at the International Airport, kids can choose a destination. And depending on how many miles they're traveling, they can decide what would be more efficient, a hybrid SUV, bus, or airplane. Even though citizens here travel the globe. If you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would it be? Tokyo. I think Hawaii. And teach others how to live. This is actually really cool. <laughs> it makes me think that maybe if we just try harder, we can make the world an eco-friendly place. There's still no place <laughs> they'd rather call home. Uh, how many hours did you guys work this uh, week? Reporting from Eco City, Nevada. I worked eight hours. Oh, oh, was a long oh, week for me. oh, there you go. Cherie Harvin, 8 News Now. Thanks, Cherie. You know, I'm glad we stopped by the gift shop so I can pick up some stuff for my kids. And next time, you'll bring them to the museum. Right away. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we're going to show you a piece of history from one of our founding fathers. Fair warning, though, it might gross you out. Welcome back. Right now I'm in the Royal Castle where kids can play all kinds of roles. They can be everything from a court jester to the magician. They can even be the king himself and sit on the royal throne. Right now Denise is upstairs solving a mystery. That's right, Paul. We've actually stepped into Solve It Mystery Town. We're back with Tiffany, who's really tired from actually climbing the summit with you. <laughs> but she hasn't run out of energy to show us how all this works. I sure haven't. This is a lot of fun. So um, you would start over here with the video and get um, a little bit of information about what it is you're to do, your clipboard, and then we're off to solve our mystery. Are you ready? I'm ready. So these are moms, dads, kids, everybody solving the mystery together. Families right? solving together. OK, so then they step on in here with their clipboard and they come up to one of these monitors. Yes, so this monitor is our remote camera and we can't get back here because it's dangerous, danger, ah. unstable rock. But we have a camera that our investigators have placed in there before we came. So kids so, can operate the remote camera here. Absolutely, so you can operate the remote camera and you're looking to see what minerals 
you can find in here. And this is the first step towards that's solving your, our mystery. That's your first clue you have. So we are literally digging for clues now in the dig pit, right? Yes, we are. And depending upon what we find out, what we find in here, that will tell us a little bit about what kind of place this is. And they collect these pieces of evidence uh, right up here, don't they? Yes, so now we sort it into the evidence sorting bins. And depending upon how much we find in those bins, that will give us another clue about what this place is and what might have happened here. So then they also take a few of those and they're gonna do a little bit of science. Yes, yeah, so we'll do right? some science, some <laughs> density calculations. So the first thing we need to do is find out our mass, mm -hmm. and then we need to find our volume. We'll do some calculations, and then that gives us the density, which tells us what object it is that we found. Another piece of our mystery puzzle. Another piece of our puzzle. Now the kids really get to get down and dirty, because they're actually going to go inside this crawl space and look for more uh, pieces of our puzzle, right? Yes, there's more clues in the crawl space on what this place is and what might have happened here. Why don't I give you a hand getting out of that crawl space? <laughs> Thank you. I'm a little dusty, but there's some neat things in there. Really cool things. But we're not going to tell you what it is because I want you guys to explore it for yourself. Yes. One thing you cannot miss is this bone laboratory, right? Yes. So this bone laboratory allows us to be able to find out some information about that skeleton they talked about in the video. We need to find out what the gender of the skeleton is, but also how tall the skeleton was. And then we take everything we've done, we put it on our clipboard, and then we turn right around and go to the laboratory station. Yes, and at the laboratory station, it allows us to be able to enter the information for our final report, and that tells us if we've gotten all the clues to our mystery. And we've solved our mystery. We've solved it all. Well, we wrapped it up here, but uh, Paul is just now finding an exhibit that he can really sink his teeth into. One of the areas the museum is most proud of is this traveling exhibit all about George Washington, and it includes the actual false teeth the former president wore. How do you think they look? Right now, kids can discover the real George Washington with new views from Mount Vernon. Yes, it's a history lesson, but it's definitely not boring. 60 rare items are on display, including an original pair of the first president's dentures made out of wood and elephant husk. Along with the dentures, there are life-size models of George Washington inside. Make sure you visit soon and see these amazing pieces of history because this exhibit will only be here through May 15th. The Discovery Children's Museum has made it really easy for families to come out and visit. They're open most days from 10 a.m. until 5. But for a complete look at the schedule, go to 8newsnow.com. And this really isn't an expensive outing. General admission is $12 for ages 1 to 99. But there is some special pricing and perks if you become a member. The family membership is $125 for unlimited admission for a year. Now this includes a card holder and five immediate family members. With this membership, you can also get 10% off one birthday package. Or you can bump it up to the Discovery membership for $175. It features one year unlimited visits for the card holder and seven guests, along with birthday package discounts, and you also get 10% taken off at the gift store. That's all for our special Pathway to Discovery. Hope to see you at the museum soon. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.